Hello, Texans, and welcome to the show that introduces you to Texans players that you may not have heard enough of. And we have one of them today for you. It's the Fuddruckers Texans Players Show. Mark Vandermeer and Deep East to do with you. And today, it's Tavier Thomas. You've heard him in sound bites. You've heard him in some interviews. But now, you get the full dose. Tavier, how's it going? How you doing? How you doing? Glad to be here. Well, it's great to have you on the show. Congratulations on the pick six and on the victory on Sunday. Before we go anywhere, your reaction to what the team was able to do, beating the Chargers the way you did, especially with so many guys on the COVID list and you don't know who's in and who's out, the whole process of getting it together and getting to the field and getting the W. It was great. Everybody just stepped up and did their thing. Like, next man up, we had the next man up mentality. We just went out there and everybody did their jobs and came out victorious. It's hard to believe that with all the picks and all the takeaways this year, you guys had not found the end zone. Your pick six was the first, obviously, of the season. And I thought it was really interesting that you said that Lovey Smith had said that it was going to be one of the nickel DBs that got into the end zone first. Do you think it was something to do with the game plan or just how you guys had been playing recently? What what do you think made him make that prediction? It's like it's like a competition with all the guys, like the, the different rooms. And me and Lovey, we're together with the Nichols. It's just us two. And he's always saying, like, it's going to be my guy to get to pick, pick six first. <laughs> get to pick six first. And then the opportunity came. And when I caught the ball, I didn't see nobody around me because I was going to go down. But I didn't see nobody around me. And I just said, oh, yeah, I'm about to score. I got to score. I got to get this on. Yeah, so, it's interesting because you could say you're going to go down, and if you go down, you could take a knee, and that's it, right? But yeah. it's too tempting to go to that end zone, right? right. I mean, it's got to be too much when you see that in front of you. How when you see all that green, when you see that green, you got to go. <laughs> well, when you're heading up the sideline, from my angle, I was like, is he going to get caught? I'm thinking that as you're running, and how did you see it? Did you think there was going to be so, somebody who was able to get to you or no? So when I first when I I was running next to Kirk, I was just running a little slow and like pacing myself. And then once I see that <laughs> old lineman going full speed, he was running so fast. I'm like, oh, I got speed up. So I just speeded up, and I knew I couldn't get caught. If I get caught, I'm gonna have to hear Traymond and Dez and all those guys talk crazy about how slow I am if I got caught by a lineman. So I had to turn them up. I read somewhere. I think Jackson, who does PR for us, he tweeted this uh, quote from the stat from next gen stats that you hit 21.68 miles per hour on your yeah. pick six. It's the fastest speed by any NFL player in week 16 and the second fastest speed by an NFL defender this season. I mean, how do you, cause you, do you ever run that fast in a practice? Like when's the last time you had to run that fast for that long? Probably um, punt when I used to play gunner, so that was probably like at the beginning of the year, something like that. But I haven't hit 21 six in all year. So when I seen that line and I had to go because I didn't want to have to hear the guy's mouth about me getting caught by a line. So I had to turn them on. I had to turn them on. <laughs> That's right, because you guys track speed now in game. So you get to see what your top speed is every single week. Yep, And I'll be yeah. at the bottom of the time. You're I at the bottom. Good. Yes. As long as nobody um, burning me, I'll be good. <laughs> I would never have to run that fast if nobody getting past me. So I try to keep him in front of me. <laughs> Tavier Thomas joining us on the Fuddruckers Texans Player Show. All right, so what is it like with new guys coming in and the communication that you guys need to be effective in the defensive backfield? Because there are a lot of calls. There are a lot of things you have to be aware of, different receivers. Take us through some of that because the names have changed throughout the year here. And the entire defense had 10 different starters from your opening day defense, seven different starters from two weeks ago. That's got to be tough. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, well, at first, during practice, like the first day of practice, it'd be tough and or whatnot, going over the game plan and putting new stuff in. But once everybody just do their job and just focus on their jobs, it becomes easier to never beat. So no matter who's in there, just go out there. We keep it basic. Everybody just doing their job. Lovey keeps it real basic for the new guys or whatnot. So we don't have a lot of ME's, mental errors. And once everybody go out and do their jobs, like the sky's the limit, we can win. And that's what we're going to continue to try to do. What about for yourself? You started seven games this year, including the last three. That's more games than, that you've started in any season in your career. How much do you think that that's really sort of helped you get on this role and really 
helped you get your game to the next level, getting so many starts? I mean, you, you saw playing time before, but actually getting starts and playing more reps. How much more has that elevated your game, do you think, this year? Um, it's elevating a lot. I'm, I'm learning this. I learned the system here. I'm um, learning defenses with Coach Lovey or whatnot because he's teaching me like the ins and outs about the whole defense. So I know what everyone's doing. And I'm just going out there having fun. I'm just, it feel like I'm back in college. Like I said before, I feel like I'm just back in college, just going out there, just doing doing what I do. <laughs> so when you say Lovey's teaching you the defense, is that like one on one he's teaching you the defense yeah. or he's teaching the group? Like how how is that going? So so Lovey's my nickel coach. So I'm with him <laughs> every day. So just you and him. Whole, yeah, or the, me. So okay. I get the whole, everything. So I know what everyone's doing. If one person gets out of that gap, I'm, I'm the guy out there saying like, bro, come on, you gotta stay in your gap. Cause I know what everybody's supposed to be doing. And everybody know what everybody's supposed to be doing. That's what we're trying to get to. So it's just, it's just that relationship with me and him and the defense is just getting better for me as a whole. How hard is it and how different is it to play nickel from outside? I know you just described some of it. So you're kind of like a quarterback of the cornerbacks, if you will. How does that work for you? Not just the mental, but the physical also. It's like you're a linebacker, but you got to cover <laughs> as quick people. So you got to want to tackle because if you don't want to tackle love, he's not going to deal with it. So just got to go in there and be a linebacker and check fast people. <laughs> so it's, it's tough sometimes, like when you got guys like Keenan Allen and Cooper Cup and those type of guys, but I just go out and trust trust my technique and make tackles and cover guys. So she's putting me in a position to make plays, so I just try to make them as much as I can. What about you and, I mean, Jonathan Owens, obviously you guys both accounted for all the takeaways on defense on Sunday, and you guys both from D2 schools. I didn't realize that you two actually started off in the league together in Arizona. He wasn't there yeah. – he was on IR, I want to say, because we had him on the player show last week. But you two started off in Arizona, and here you are with the Texans, and then you both get takeaways in the same <laughs> big game, in a, in, the, in a win on top of everything else. I mean, when you look at a guy like that, you know, how inspirational have you two been to each other, and what's that road been like coming from D2 schools? Coming from D2, it's, it's pretty hard to get, like, playing defense or whatnot because you haven't really checked, like, the top top tier guys so you really got to sit back and just learn the system and then once your opportunity come you got to just run with it like you can't look back and me and J.O. the whole year we've been talking he was playing he was on the practice squad or whatnot and I was just telling him like you got to stay ready stay ready stay ready and once this opportunity came these past two weeks he's showing everyone what he could do in the NFL and and it's not just D2 it's he can really do it in the NFL and he's actually doing it so proud of him and we came in together and that's my guy, me, him, Simone, and my fiance. We're real close, so that's that's my people. <laughs> oh, I'm that's happy great. for him. I'm real happy for him. So he just got to keep it up, keep doing, keep going. How did you know? How did you know before the game started? You guys had said that you wanted to end the game on a defensive touchdown. Like you guys, it's almost like you guys manifested your vision yeah. before the game. It was like a, it was like a TV time. I was all on field, and we all came in together. It, it's probably on Jo was mic'd up, so it's probably on there. So we was all we all huddled up. D walk brought us all up on the field. He's like, man, let's take the ball away. Somebody just take it away. Just take it away. Let's end it on the defensive side of the ball. And just two plays later, we did that. So it was just like we really manifested for real. <laughs> all right. So Tavier, Tavier Thomas with us, by the way. I know where Ferris State is. I used to live in Mount Pleasant, so not too far away. I know about the Bulldogs. I know about the GLIAC, your conference. Tell us how you ended up at Ferris State. And what people don't know is that this is a Division II power. I mean, this is a really oh, yeah. good football school, right? Yes, sir. Just won national championship, by the way. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I was I went to a school called Allen Academy in Detroit, and we were a charter school. Ferris State chartered um, the school, about oh. school that I went to. So I had real good grades, but I didn't have the – big ACT score. I couldn't get an 18 to save my life. <laughs> I was getting 17. I got 17 three times in a row. I was potentially going to Iowa with Dez. That was my best friend growing up, and now we're together now. So I was going to Iowa with him, but everyone pulled their offers. All D1 teams pulled their offers. I couldn't get 18 to go out of state. So I just went to Ferris off my grades and went, went up to Coach Anise, asked him to walk on. He gave me a shot, and I just never looked back from there. Just kept going better and better each and every day. And now I'm here going on four years. 
What's crazy is that you had all those issues with like the ACT, but then you weren't you on academic scholarship at Ferris State? <laughs> yes, I just could not take tests. Like tests was just not me like at all. But I graduated with a three six overall in college, so I'm pretty smart. It's just them tests are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot of people out there that can relate to just not doing well on tests. But then you were a walk on at Ferris State. So did you feel like some uncertainty that, you know, what if I'm here and I still don't make it onto the football oh, yeah. team? Or did you feel like it was just a matter of time? It, um, so I was registering my freshman year. I was registering the whole year and I was checking the, the top guys on offense or whatnot. And like three games left in the season, the starting corner towards ACL, so they had to bring somebody up. And not knowing that I'm going to burn my whole red shirt here, I'm like, I want to play. They asked me to play. I'm like, yeah, I'll play. Then I just I went from there and just ever since then, I just got better and better each and every year. Sky's the limit. What's it like to play at Ferris? And you played in the playoffs and everything in Division Two, and probably had some, you know, relatively decent crowds to have here. But then you get to the NFL and you're playing in these huge stadiums not only against the athletes you're facing, but the huge stadiums and that part of it, it's got to be kind of strange. What was it like for you at first? Oh, yeah, it was real strange. Like, the first time I went to an NFL game was running out of the tunnel for one. So when I seen that, I, I cried. I'm not going to wow. lie. I was, I was nervous. Like, I couldn't stop shaking out there because all you see when you run out of that tunnel is light and catch it, lights, camera action. So it was crazy. Like, I never played in front of those many people. But now it was getting, it's getting – I'm used to it now, but at first it was real. It was real. <laughs> it was real. What was your welcome to the NFL moment in practice or training camp or whatever? You started with Arizona, so maybe it was there where you had a situation mm -hmm. happen in practice. Maybe it was OTAs or even rookie camp. Oh, what can you tell us about that? Training camp. In Arizona, training camp, going in. The first practice, right after the practice, it was so hot up there, and we had an indoor literally right next to us. And when they had us outside, it was like 110 degrees. And I was just, I, after practice, I was, I just fell out. And I was just like, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. And J.O. was right there laying right next to me. That's just crazy. J.O. was laying right next to me in the locker room. We was in the visiting locker room because we didn't make the 53 yet. So we was together, just laid out, tired, cramping up. Just, oh, my God. I didn't think I would make it. But it all planned out for me. <laughs> and I went to Cleveland. I was close to home. So now I'm here. I, I think everyone has to know like what okay what's the worst training camp weather is, is it that dry arizona heat or is it the houston humidity it's the houston humidity i know really so. really <laughs> yes 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 this I, it was this was by far training camp wide the hottest i ever been right <laughs> it was the practices were later like 10, yeah 10 pounds every time you lose them 10 8 10 pounds out there it's just Oh, it's bad. <laughs> I, I'm surprised about that because Arizona, yeah. you mentioned it, it's like 110. I mean, hot is hot. I always thought that might be worse than this. No, the humidity here is crazy. Mm. It's crazy. <laughs> I feel yeah. like you're you're in a desert out there. Like you're not sweating. Your mouth you is are dry. In a desert. <laughs> you are. I mean, it's you hard. are in a desert, but it's just like that dry that dry heat just feels See, out there, awful. Out, out there. Um, yeah, it's hot. It's, I don't even know. It's hot. <laughs> did you guys practice? Did you guys practice earlier in the day? Did that make a difference out there? No, no. We <laughs> practiced does. early in the day, but I'm happy we didn't practice later in the day because it get hotter. But it was just it's it's terrible. Both both of them are just terrible. <laughs> equally bad. <laughs> yes, equally yes. All right, so you go to Cleveland then, and I know you make plays on special teams right away. How important is that for a guy in your position to jump into the fray on special teams and make a difference right there? You you have to. Guys like myself and other small school guys, like if you're not one of the top, top guys, top draft picks or whatnot, you got to get in where you fit in. You got to know your role. And your role on special teams, that's what you got to do. So when I signed here, I'm thinking the same thing. Like my mindset was I got to be the best special teams player in the NFL with the other guys like Trey and AJ and those guys. So I knew I had some competition, so I had to go as hard as I could. So I was going hard each and every day. And then once my opportunity came to play defense, I just embraced that role. And now I'm just, just continuing to get better each and every week. That's my goal. I think it's ironic that we've got you on the week before we play the 49ers because 
One of the big plays of yours that I saw when we signed you, because I was going back and looking through players and getting to know them for a series I was doing called Get, Get to Know, you blocked a field goal on Monday Night Football against the 49ers back in 2019 when you were with the Browns. And that the NFL like tweeted out this entire highlight of you coming off the edge and, and blocking the field goal. Like how, how special was that moment, especially considering like now I know you've never – gone to an NFL game, but talk about bright lights and Monday night football Perfect. nationally televised, making a play like that. That was, that was crazy. I knew everyone in the world where really my family was watching. So for me to do that, it was just like, it's not often that you see guys block field goal. So for me to do that, it was amazing. Like I loved it. I was happy. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Every time I look at my phone, just like now, every time I look at my phone, it's somebody posting me scoring a touchdown. And it was the same way back then when I was blocking field goals. So it was amazing. I know in some ways we're kind of like Browns South right now with the Houston Texans, but you were there when Tyrod was there, right? Uh, yes. In 2018 and made way for Baker Mayfield and all that. What's it like to be in Cleveland, especially that year when you started to do a little bit better and they were used to a lot of, a lot of losing, let's just be honest. And they were starting to win a little bit more. Um, it was great to be a part of the turnaround. Like there's turning the whole organization has turned around from before we got there to now. So it was it was an amazing feeling to be able to be able out there and just actually help in some way, some fashion to turn the thing around. And that's what we we me and the guys did. So it was it was nice. It was great to be there when that time. So yeah. Were you there during hard knocks? Do you remember the hard knocks? I got there. So they did it. Um, I was in training camp with Arizona. So that's when they were doing it um, there. And when I got there, it was over with. It was already finished. It, okay. Yeah, it wasn't doing this season. Okay. So if you, it's up to you, all right. So Nick Casario, David Cully, they come to you and say, listen, Hard Knocks wants to come here and do an in season Hard Knocks. And you get to make the decision, Tavier. Is Hard Knocks <laughs> coming or not? What do you think? Oh, yes. 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 Y'all go oh, see. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Come on. Come on. You're going to see it all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> Come on with it. Come on. <laughs> have you been watching? I mean, you guys are really busy, but have you been watching at all the the Colts? I mean, that's the first time they're doing an in season. I haven't seen. I haven't seen it. I'm gonna check it out. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm gonna check it out today when I get home today. Well, we're going to the Lakers game. Me and some of the guys. Well, the Houston mm -hmm. game. Going to see LeBron. Got to see LeBron. So we're going to see that. But later on tonight, I'm gonna check it out. See what it's about. I I'm, I got I got to check out Kenny Moore. He's pretty good. So. Just try to check him out. He's pretty good. So who would be like the funniest, most entertaining defensive back for the Houston Texans in Texans in-season hard knocks? <sighs> Other than you. <laughs> the funniest I would have to go with Traymond. Mm -hmm. Traymond is a character. That's what he is. Traymond, he's a character. So I have to go with Trey. I was going to ask you because when he was on our show a few weeks ago, he was talking about the white elephant gift exchange, which would have been a great segment on in-season hard knocks. And yes. he was just talking about like the different gifts and the group chat and everyone putting in their shoe sizes and their shirt sizes to make sure like if anyone got them a gift, it was the right size. But how did, how did the white elephant shake out? Who did you get? Who got you? Were you happy with your gift? Are you allowed to disclose any of this information? Oh yeah. I was real happy with my gift. Strap had me. Um, he got me the um, Louis Louis hat with the Louis scarf, and um, I had T. Mitch Terrence got him some Gucci shoes and some Balenciaga shoes. So me and Terrence, we were real real close. We've been together for four years now. So that's my dog. So I went all out for him. So because I know he would have did the same for me. <laughs> but a lot of guys guys got great things, a lot of great things. So everybody was happy. Wait, who did you say had you? Strap. Who's that? <laughs> With the dreads. He's on a practice squad. Oh, I, I thought, <laughs> I was like, wow, it. these are some nicknames I don't know. Yeah, okay. we, got all the, we, don't, we don't disclose um, the real names. You know, we got all <laughs> oh, nicknames. okay. That's they'll fair. Be on, they'll be on me if I disclose real names. Well, you know, it's funny because you guys are clearly on the practice field and on the game field, but you don't have the in-person meetings right now. A couple of weeks ago, we went into these intensive protocols. What is that like and how is it different for you as a player learning stuff or getting the game plan through Zoom as opposed to in person? It's got to be a little different. How do you feel about it, Tavier? It's, it's different for sure. Like 
before when I had these type of meetings, like I didn't have a kid. So now I got a one year old boy and he's I gotta hide in a closet or something just to do my because <laughs> he's gonna come find me. So you gotta stay focused. You gotta it's it's real more you gotta stay a lot more focused than being in person because when you miss one thing and then it happened in the game, he's like, I showed you this on film and you really wasn't paying attention. So you got really gotta pay attention, stay focused and get away from the family. That's what I try to hide away from my son. So because he's bad, he's terrible. <laughs> I think one, a one-year-old boy, that might be one of the worst phases to have to do a Zoom call with. Because they're walking. You can't just stick him in somewhere and he's, he's not walking, coming. He's, he's talking in, I don't know what type of language. I don't <laughs> know what language it is he's speaking in. <laughs> but every time we get to talk, we just say English, English. So he can talk English, but he's don't pay no, us no mind. And now he got a dog. So we got him a dog for Christmas. So now he's wow. just, it's terrible now. So we picked the dog up and he don't, he go crazy. Anytime we pick the dog up, he starts screaming, put his dog down. So <laughs> Wait, what kind of dog did you all get for Christmas? A French boy dog. Oh, very cute. Like Traymon. That's what Traymon yep. has, right? Yep. What's your dog's yeah. name? Storm. It's okay. a girl, Storm. Oh, that's really cute. Nice, Storm. X-Men. Uh, so <laughs> meeting somebody on Zoom and then you see them on the practice field. So you last couple of years you've probably met people for the first time on the practice field like hey who yeah. are you you know because right. justin reed was joking like he's still learning guys names you know and they're playing a game <laughs> together <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's, a, it's a lot of guys i still learn especially mm -hmm. from this past week so oh, like right. be live and stuff like that like we out there balling like they balling and stuff and i want to say like yeah i want to say his name but i don't know his name so i just hit his down like, yeah let's go <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so we still yeah. know, getting to know each other I want to ask you this because like a guy and I know he's a different position group, but a guy like Michael Drum right? Playing in his first game, half sack plays against the chargers. You guys win, you know, what is it about the NFL that fans and maybe media that we don't understand uh, the heart, the desire, the ability to go out there and make plays, you know, the charger fans are saying, well, we didn't have Joey Bosa. Well, you, either did we, <laughs> and you know, you have guys coming in there playing their first game, making plays. What is it about that, Tavier? It's just, you really just waiting on your opportunity. He's been in locker room with us for a minute, a couple of weeks mm -hmm. now. And he just always been like, he's at practice. He's going against Titus. And right before the game, I told him, like, bro, if you can do what you're doing with Titus at practice, Titus is one of the top guys in the NFL. If you can do that with him, you can do that with anyone. Just go out there and just have fun. And then he went out there and just balled out. So I was happy for him. You had a chance to, to see Davis Mills in practice every single week, especially when he was the backup. I mean, what do you think of just his performance in the last two weeks and how much he's grown since – starting earlier in the year when Tyrod was hurt and then now coming back, like what, from your perspective, how much, how much has he grown? Where have you seen like the most improvement in Davis Mills this year? He's, he's, he's getting better each and every day. Like it's not just we like these in these games, even at practice, like when he's going against the, all, the starting defense in two minute drills and stuff, he's making the right throws, making the right calls. And I, I feel like he's just getting more comfortable. And he's, I told him just play like you in college. You don't have to just go out there and just play. Like, don't worry about making mistakes. Just go out there and do your thing. And y'all see you got the swag on. We got him wearing the sleeve now. So <laughs> go out there, swagged out. You're going to have fun and just make plays. And that's what he's out there doing. And I'm so happy that he's able to do the things that he's doing right now because it's getting us the wins. I love that after your touchdown celebration, he came into the huddle. I don't know where he, where he must have been on the <laughs> sideline. He came over to join you guys. Did you see that clip? I think we tweeted it out. That yep, he was spotted in your circle. I seen it. Like, that's what, like, ever since in these past two weeks, like, the whole team has been together. Usually it'd be the defense sitting down, watching the game on the bench or stuff like that when the offense up. But now, and vice versa, but now it's like everyone, like the offense, one of the offensive guys score, we all in the end zone. Like when the defensive guys make a play, we're all down there. So for us to be doing this, that's why we're getting the wins because it's all, uh, it's building camaraderie. I don't know that word. But <laughs> everyone's just playing, everyone's just having fun out there and just playing together and playing complimentary football. And we continue to do that. We're going to continue to win. And we're just trying to get better each and every week and go out on top with these last two games.
All right, Tavier Thomas is our guest, and we'll give you a chance to win a Fuddruckers gift card coming up in the next segment. And it's based on something that we talked about in the first segment. Don't worry, it'll be easy. We'll <laughs> also hear the pick six play that he had and get to know him a little bit better and get you ready for the 49ers, the next opponent for the Houston Texans. It's the Fuddruckers Texans Player Show on Texans Radio. Pick six by Tavier Thomas, took it to the house, and the Texans got the win over the L.A. Chargers, bound for California this week, home game last week, road game this week against the 49ers. 305 kickoff, by the way. Let's give away the Fuddruckers gift card right now, shall we? All right. In the first segment, we talked about where Tavier went to college. Where did he go to college? Get it right first at this email address, texansradio at houstontexans.com. Go ahead and email texansradio at houstontexans.com. Super easy. Get it right first. Where did Tavier go to college? And you're getting the Fuddruckers gift card. Texansradio at houstontexans.com. DP? All right, I have a question. We were talking about Traymond Smith in the last segment, and he had the carry on offense. Um, as running back, we had him on the show a few weeks ago. He said that he had been um, looked at as a running back, as a wide receiver when he was in Kansas City. Have you also lobbied for any time on offense? I mean, did you see how this went down with Traymond? Was he trying to work Tim Kelly? Like, how did that all go down? So he told us whoever gets whoever gets his own first out of the DBs can get a play on offense. So everybody was trying to get a play. Everybody was trying to get his own. So when I got my reverse, right before I got my reverse, all I was thinking, so when they called the play, I'm like, oh, I got to get his own. And I tried, I tried my hardest to get an his own because I wanted to be the first one. So, but then Trey did it. So I was pretty, I was happy for him. But since I got an his own this week, everybody asked me, like, is you going to do it? You going to do it? I'm like, nope, I'm just leave that to Trey. I'm just leave it to Trey. Trey looked good out there, so I'm going to leave that to him. <laughs> I don't want to do it. He got hit hard. He hit his head hard. He said, I ain't trying to do all that. <laughs> he said he got hit hard. I mean, you could make a case for yourself with Tim Kelly. You got some speed going on there. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably uh, top three on team speed, you know. Trey, mm -hmm. Trey, Trey got to catch up a little bit. We in competition. <laughs> And you got that sideline tiptoe tightrope walk down. Oh, yeah. So that's very cool. Very <laughs> cool no, indeed. I, I probably would have scored if I was Trey. If that was me, I probably would have scored right there. I don't, I don't know how he got <laughs> <laughs> 70 yards. He could have went to the house. I like that, though. I like that wrinkle because guess what? The 49ers are saying, hey, wait a minute. And they'll hear what you just said thinking, well, Tavier Tom is going to come in on offense at some point. We better be ready. <laughs> we got to no, prepare I, for this. I you never know. Ready. You never know. Hey, so you've played the last two road games very well. Back-to-back -back wins on the road. I know you had the three-game homestand in between, but what is it about being on the road that can even further bring this team together? You talked about guys are really coming together on the sideline, offense, defense, special teams, and now you play another team that has playoffs in its sights and a chance to make a big statement on the West Coast. What do you think? Just got to go out there and just ball out. We're not, I know they're trying to get to the playoffs or whatnot. We're not trying to knock those guys out of the playoffs, but we're trying to get the win. And we're going to go up there to win. We're not going to lose. So they better bring their A game. I don't know if the Chargers bring their A game, but we're going to bring ours each and every week. So we, if we knock you off, and we knock you off. <laughs> we coming. I have actually have you been following. I mean, obviously, you probably know with Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance, the quarterback situation is kind of murky in San Francisco. You could be facing a rookie quarterback this week, but how does that change preparation heading into the week? I mean, they're obviously, well, you got a veteran quarterback and you got a rookie, but how do you sort of approach the week when you have a scenario like that? And yeah. what are your thoughts on, on both of those guys? Yeah, I just approach it the same way with either guy because they're both in the NFL. And like, Trey Lance, he, top draft pick and Jimmy Garoppolo, he's been doing it for a while. So we just got to go in there and approach them both the exact same and just go with the game plan that Lovey puts out for us. And we just get, just go out there and do our jobs. And no matter who's the quarterback, just try to get takeaways. Javier, what's it like uh, on your body this time of year? I know we have the 17 game schedule as well. You had the bye week, but still it's a longer season and you had three game preseason, but you get my drift here. It's been a long campaign. What does it feel like for you? And I know different guys are dealing with different ailments, injuries, whatever, but overall, how does your body feel at this point of the season? Uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty solid. I'll be having bruises from here and there, but just got to keep getting, go get work with the trainers and just 
continue to stay on top of it. I just got from massage right before I got on. So I try to get massage every Tuesday and Friday. So just keep doing those type of things and stand with the trainers and they keep me healthy. What about eating? Have you changed your eating habits since you came into the league? I know you guys get state of the art nutrition and everything. How has that evolved for you? You're not, you're not getting older yet. But you're not a rookie either. So how has that adjusted as you've gone through? Your um, a, a, a little bit. I changed a little bit. I used to eat honey buns every day. So I can't <laughs> eat that no more. <laughs> I can't eat that no more. So I don't, like I try to back down on like all my sweets and stuff and try to eat more vegetables because the nutritionist guys, they be on me here. So I try to stay on top of that. And I, it's been working. So <laughs> I'm just continuing to do it. What's, what's the hardest thing for you to have to eliminate from your diet during the season? Is it sweets? Is it sweets. fried food? What is it? Sweets. Sweets. It's like, your I, need, I need sweet honey bun. Oh, like honey, honey buns. Bun, <laughs> I can eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I can eat them. Yeah. Like mm. I need honey buns, bro. So it, it get hard. Like when I go home and she goes grocery shopping and I go in the pantry and there's no honey buns. It's just all caviar fruit snacks and healthy fruit snacks and bull, bull crap. So when I go to the gas station, I eat my stuff in the car. <laughs> oh man. Have you been how, able how to hard get... is it during, how hard is it during the holidays? Like to, to stick to that diet? Do you guys get to veer off of it a little bit? Like after oh, games and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. After games, that's when I eat. So I go to steak houses and stuff like that. So Sundays after every Sunday game, a home game with my family here, we always go out to then Monday, I just got a sauna for Christmas. My fiance bought me a sauna. So no matter what I eat, I can just go get in the sauna and get it up off me. <laughs> <laughs> lose lose the those pounds. Diet. <laughs> Doesn't that work, getting in the sauna and losing the weight that way? Maybe oh, yeah. I should try. Oh, it, 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 it works. Oh. That's a great That's a great one. That's a good I can sit there. It's just you go to Arizona <laughs> in the summertime. Same yeah, thing, yeah. right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah that's tremendous. Uh, so have you been out to some Houston restaurants? I mean, we don't need names and everything, but do you like Texas barbecue, the Tex-Mex stuff? I mean, how, do you like the food here? Have you been able to sample enough of it? It's tech, like, we were looking for a house in Houston before I even signed with Houston. Like, this is where we wanted to live. So we came out here once, and it was just great. So we like, we're going to find a house there. And then while looking for a house, I got signed by Houston. So it just all worked out. Like, we love it here. Like we love the food. Everything is just good here. My son, he's not back in Detroit, where we're from. I need to keep him up out of there. So stay in the suburbs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Stay up out of there. So I ain't trying to go back. What What drew you to Houston before you even signed here? Had you visited like, here before? You had family here? Yeah, we visited. We visited once up here. We came up here for like probably like four days, four or five days. And we loved it. Like we, we went to the... Um, neighborhoods and stuff all the neighborhoods was nice it's way cheaper than michigan like buying a house in michigan so it all worked out for us so we loved it and we just not trying to go back <laughs> see uh and 50 cent just moved here too how about that? yeah see, that was my dog I, 50 cent my dog do you know him in no i don't life? know him personally i wish i knew him personally <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't know it yet. You guys are you guys are friends. He just well, he was he yet. was in the house on Sunday and I know I had to make a play I had to turn him up <laughs> that's why he scored he should come to all the games he, maybe he was a good luck charm yeah well i mean to to you all right so to me db's gonna laugh here like to me 50 cent is not i know he's old school but he's not as old school as some of my old school stuff right <laughs> so to you he's got to be old school right so who is he to you as as a, a musical artist He's he's one he's top three in my in my opinion mm -hmm. musical artist. Fifty Cent, me and my brother, we used to be like the G Unit. Me and my brother, we used to listen to all his music. I know every song, like for word for word. So for him, he's probably like for for me. Um, ah, I can't stay straight. Um, I don't even know. Like a retro. Probably well, like yeah, retro hip-hop. Top I three mean, is top three. That's awesome. Yeah, he's, Mark, like, he's Mark, like top three for me, for sure. Mark only discovered 50 Cent like a few years ago. <laughs> no, he told I us about this was. song. He goes, I've heard this song called In the Club, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> turns 18 this year. I think Get, Get Rich or Die Trying came out 18 years ago. Yeah. And Mark stumbled upon shoes. it a few years ago. I had, he, need, he need to bring the shoes back. I had the G on the shoes. I had the game. <laughs> I had all of it. I had That's all of awesome. it. Well, look, I, I knew the song because how can you not know the song? I knew the melody. 
<laughs> I'm going to just going to embarrass myself. Right now. <laughs> uh, but I didn't know it was him doing the song. Oh. Uh, but that was a few years ago. But now I know everything. OK. And yeah, he's do. a big Texans fan. So that's very cool. All right. Tavier Thomas is our guest. And next up, a little bit more on the upcoming game and also Detroit. I want to ask him some Detroit questions. We did this with Des King a few weeks ago. And let's have that next year on the Fuddruckers Texans Players Show on Texans Radio. It's the Fuddruckers Texans Players Show. Mark Vandermeer and D.B. Sidhu with you. Tavier Thomas is our guest. And we're doing Zoom calls here, folks, for the Fuddruckers Texans Players Show and all interviews because of protocols. Uh, so we're all safe. And if my voice sounds a little screwed up, it's Tavier's fault because of the call of the pick six on Sunday. That is definitely my fault, or his fault, rather, and my suffering. Anyway, Tavier, let's talk about Detroit here for a moment. Uh, give me give me two or three great things about Detroit that people don't know about your hometown. Uh, we got like um, three clubs, three clubs that everybody be like, it's not fun in Detroit. It's not fun. It's nothing to do. But if you go to Annex 29 and Park, Annex 29 and Park, or um, what's the last one? Nikki's, you're going to have the most fun time in your life. So that's where we go to have fun and whatnot. There don't be no drama all that type of stuff like people think so that'd be fun that's three fun things that you could possibly do out there and then like all the cars like we're the car city like we got all the cars out there and what else do you or did you your relatives work in the auto industry um i have my brother my brother he works for chrysler my mom she works for chrysler um my granddad he used to work for chrysler everyone they work all they all work for Chrysler. So yeah, <laughs> they all do that. We were talking to Desmond King a few weeks ago about Motown, and he mentioned that that was one of the field trips that he took as a kid. Was that a popular field trip destination? Oh yeah, that's right on the boulevard. Um, it's a Motown museum. So all like Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, all those type of guys, they they were there and they have a lot of like museum type things in there that you will want to go to see. Sometimes they let you purchase things, but not often. <laughs> All right. So I mentioned to you in the first segment that I lived in Mount Pleasant. I was the voice of Central Michigan University for a while. And when I was there, I did a game uh, at Chrysler Arena with the Fab Five playing the Chippewas. And it was really cool. And so when we had Desmond King on the show, I looked it up and I was like, I wonder what the Fab Five means to him. And he wasn't even born when they were done. So <laughs> what does the Fab Five mean to you? Because it's such a Detroit thing, even though they played in Ann Arbor. Uh, see, me, I, I really, I was always a, a, a football guy. Like, like I wasn't good in basketball. Like, Des, Des and other guys that's in the NFL from Detroit, all our friends, they were all good in both sports. I was... All I could do on basketball is play defense. So I just stuck, stick to football. <laughs> I just stuck to football. But I know the guy, like, I know the Fab Five and whatnot. It was amazing what they did and whatnot. At the time, I was the only bad thing, but <laughs> it was good. Were you a Lions fan? Growing up, yes. Barry Sanders is my favorite player in the world. So I always wanted to meet Barry. Well, I met him once. Mm -hmm. um, and I met um, Jim Caldwell at my Jim, me and Jim Caldwell, we had the same barber back at home, so I met him. <laughs> so, yeah, I was a big Lions fan. I was a big Lions fan. Caldwell did a nice job there. You know, I think they'd love to have that kind of success right now. Jim Caldwell's a good guy, no question about it. Coached the Colts also. Uh, so that was uh, part of the deal there. So you went to Ferris State, and uh, give me your best college memory playing for the Bulldogs, playing in D2. Was it in the playoffs? Was it another game? What was your best college football memory? Uh, going against Grand Valley State. It was our rival school going against Grand Valley on ESPN. And that was like the game of the week or whatnot. And I went out and caught three interceptions in the game. And ever since then, that was my junior year. And ever since then, all the NFL teams were calling me or whatnot, coming to the practices and stuff, even though I didn't practice a lot because I had to stay healthy for the game. <laughs> so I didn't really practice a lot. But they were all out there. And ever since then, it was like everyone knew, knew my name in college or whatnot. So it all worked out for me after that game. Sunday was your first pick six in the NFL, but I remember you saying that you had some pick sixes in college. What was your biggest pick six play? Um, my first time starting um, in college, 
um, going against Grand Valley. When we was going against Grand Valley, my sophomore year, I was playing safety and caught a pick six to end the game the exact same way. It was a well, it was a seven route. I was playing safety and I jumped the seven route, and took it to the house, probably about forty eight some yards. It was probably just the same, literally. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Ferris State is a hockey school, D1 hockey program. Detroit is Hockey Town, USA. What about hockey, Tavier? Um, always wanted to go to a hockey game. I've never been to, like, well, I went to a Ferris hockey game, but I've never been to a, a Red Wings game. And Ferris be turned up, so I know the Red Wings are turned up. So my goal this year in 2022, well, next year in a couple of days, is to go to a Red Wings game so or a game out here in Houston to see that experience. What's your pregame routine in the NFL? Like, is your day the same every single Sunday leading up to the game as far as, like, what you eat, what you listen to, that kind of thing? How do you adjust? Share that with us. Yeah, so every every Saturday night going into Sunday, always go to sleep, listen to Stevie Wonder. That's, like, a big thing with my family. My granddad loves Stevie Wonder, so I listen to Stevie Wonder before I go to sleep. Nice. Just leave the plan. So I listen to that, get up, eat eat breakfast, because lab be on me. You got to eat, Tavier, you got to eat. So I go eat, eat some eggs or whatnot. And then get to the facility, talk a little football, talk about stuff with the guys in the locker room. And after that, I'm locked in. Take my medicine, and I'm, I'm locked in. <laughs> Every Sunday. That's what it's, it's so Stevie same. Wonder, Stevie Wonder, before the game, what do you listen to on game day when you're warming up? Are you listening to music when you're warming up? Game day, warming up, I'm listening to all Detroit music. All the guys, you post them on Instagram or whatnot, give them a little buzz or what, whatnot. Not just Detroit music, but a lot of a lot of my friends rap or whatnot. So I be listening to those guys. So it's a mixture. On the plane, are you watching videos and stuff? Are you listening to music or just crashed out? What are you doing? I'm crashed, I'm crashed out. I stay up. I hate being on the plane. So the night before, I try to stay up as long as I can, watch the video or whatnot just because I know we're about to get on the plane the next day so I can go straight to sleep. So me and Trey try to um, – we bet each other who's going to be the first one to sleep. So I'm just... <laughs> What do you watch it on TV at home? Uh, power. I love fitness. Oh, 50 Cent. 50 Cent, Ghost. So we'll be watching Ghost and BMF. Mm-hmm. And we all come in on Sunday. That's another part of our routine. We all come in on Sunday talking about what happened at 12 o'clock, the 12 a.m. the night before on what happened with Ghost. So he need to um, stop doing this two-week thing and just let it keep rolling, rolling, rolling so we can keep going. All right. Well, Tavier, thanks so much for being on the show with us. We really love the visit and appreciate it. Thanks so much, and good luck against the 49ers on Sunday. Thank you. I appreciate you guys.